Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my latest video or welcome back to my channel in general because it's been a little while since I did my last video. Uh, firstly, I just want to thank everybody who messaged me to say, oh Stace, where are you? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I uh, just haven't been as active with Astro as I would have liked. Uh, and as usual, the weather in the UK has been horrendous. Um, I'd actually say it's been worse than previous years, um, so yeah, I'm fingers crossed for some clear skies soon. So with this video, it's a little bit of a tutorial on how to combine a HA image with an RGB image uh, to make a HA RGB image. Now, this data was captured in January last year and it's of the Horsehead Nebula um, and the HA data was captured using the Altair Astro Triband filter but you could also use something like an L Enhance or an Extreme or even an STC Duo. And the RGB data was using a light pollution filter such as the L Pro Max. So let's move over into Photoshop. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and the bell. So I've opened Photoshop because sometimes it takes a little while to open and I'm just going to navigate to the folder which contains my two uh, images that I want to combine. Now, so both images were stacked in Astro Pixel Processor. The HA data was stacked using the HA extract algorithm in Astro Pixel Processor whereas the RGB data was stacked using the normal adaptive area disk algorithm. So click control and hold both of those files and then just going to drag them into Photoshop. All that was done of these images in Astro Pixel Processor was a, a sort of medium stretch, nothing too crazy, I didn't do any other processing, no light pollution removal or anything, just literally stacked, uh, stretched and saved as a 16-bit TIFF for me to bring over into Photoshop. First things first, you'll notice the, two, the orientation of the two files is different, so I'm just going to rotate this image by 180 degrees to match my HA image. Next thing you might notice is there's a slight green tinge, so I'm going to use the Hasta La Vista green filter. Now this is free to download and I'll put the link in the description but I recommend making a donation if you can because it's well worth uh, giving a little bit to the creator. So here we go, Hasta La Vista Green, I'm doing a strong removal and that's it, bye bye green. You might have noticed that you know the colour balance has changed just a touch. Now you could combine these images as they are um, or you could process two of them separately then combine. There's no hard or fast or right way to do things um, in astrophotography. I always say experiment and find out what works best for you um, and find your own workflow and yeah go with it. Um, in this video to keep it not too long I'm going to just do a touch of processing on each image and then we'll combine them. So we've got a big dust spot here because I was lazy I didn't do any flats. <laughs> So I'm going to use the lasso tool just to go around it and then I'm going to click right click in the middle and press fill. Now bring this window over to the here. I'm using a content aware fill and I'm going to click OK. So it's just thinking about it and it's going to fill it now. So you'll notice it's filled. Um, the, the contents have changed a little bit and I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to press escape on the key, uh, sorry, select, deselect or control plus D to deselect that area. Um, it might have changed a little bit, that's okay, I'll bring the detail back with the HA um, layer in a little while. You may also notice this big halo here, um, that was from using the L Pro Max, but it's not the L Pro Max's fault, it's basically because I put the filter on the end of the reducer rather than putting it as close to the as possible to the sensor of my camera 
now that I'm using a filter drawer and I've got the filter drawer pretty much connected right against the camera no halos so there we go I'm just going to open up the camera raw filter at And all I'm going to do is boost the, do a bit of uh, clarity, maybe a slight dehaze and a little bit of noise reduction and then I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to bring the highlights down and the whites just to bring those stars a little bit under control. Boost the dehaze, boost the clarity. I'm going to go to detail and I'm going to do a 30% well, noise reduction and I'm going to click OK. That's the extent of the processing I'm going to do on my RGB image. But you could go further, you could like fully process this image and then add the HA in afterwards or you could you know just combine them as is. I'm not going to tell you what's the right or wrong way because that's the fun of astrophotography, you can choose how to process things yourself. Next, I'm just going to do exactly the same on the um, HA image. So you could open the camera raw filter and specialise it for this image itself, but I'm just going to run the same on this image. There we go. So next thing's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the whole of the HA image. Now you could either go to select and then all, or you can press control plus A. So you'll notice now you've got these marching ants, as we call them, around the whole of the image. And then I'm going to press control plus C, which means copy, or you could go to edit and press copy. So that means now the whole of this image data has been copied. I'm then going to go back to my 269 image and I'm going to head over here to where it says channels. And I'm going to click on the red channel. So make sure just the red channel is selected and you'll know, know that it's selected because like it'll have the box the line will be like highlight highlighted and then I'm going to either go to edit and paste or I'm going to press control plus V so there we go I have now pasted my HA image into the red channel of my RGB data but there's a problem it doesn't quite match can you see how there's a mismatch on the data? You then need to go to this move tool and click. And now using the arrow keys and your mouse, you need to try and match up the data to each other as close as possible. You'll notice as you get closer to matching them up that everything come, becomes a little bit sharper. And I should have added that when you want to see that if they're matching up, you need to make sure that you can see the RGB, all these different channels in one. Now, I'm matched up really well in the middle, but at the edges, I'm not so it's it's not horrendous but it's not great and i'll tell you what that is because my two different filters they have slightly they ended up making my uh camera and scope having a combination of having a slightly different focal length so i just need to adjust the ha data to make sure that it matches as close as possible so i'm going to click on the here and zoom in to 50 percent And I'm going to hold control because that gives me a little bit more control. And I'm just rotating and using the, the 
directional keys on my keyboard to make sure it matches up as close as possible. Ignore all this marching ant stuff, I think that's because Photoshop's having a little bit of a tantrum. I'm still slightly mismatched here, but it is really a case of matching it up best case scenario. So let's have a look. Notice my star shapes are a little bit out, I need to correct my, my um, distance in between the reducer and my camera as well. So let's have a look. How do we look in the middle? We're still looking okay. still slightly out you might want to spend a little bit of time doing this because the better match you get the better it's going to turn out okay that's not looking too bad not too bad at all there we go so now that it's matched up as best as possible I'm just going to hit return on the keyboard and then I'm going to click select and deselect or control plus D and I'm going to zoom out again to 15% so you can see where the one um, channel has been laid over the other there was a slight mismatch in position and, and focal length but as long as you can get it to match as close as possible you're going to be adding that nice HI detail so Clicking back on RGB and notice all the channels have become selected again. And then I'm going to click back onto layers. And then I'm just going to, um, I'm then not going to crop yet. I've still got the HA file that I copied in the, the computer memory. So now that we've got layers selected, I'm going to go back to edit or I'm going to click control plus V again. And now I've pasted that layer over the top of my HARGB image um, as a layer. So we've got the background, if I make it visible, which is our RGB plus the HA image in the red channel. And then we've got our, our HA image as a layer over the top. Now if I select this layer and go to the bottom uh, blending option, which is luminosity, you'll notice there's a, a positional mismatch again you can reduce the opacity a little bit if you want to make it a little bit easier to see so let's go to 70 percent now make sure this move tool is selected and once again you need to make sure that it matches as best as possible so it's just a case of ma moving the HA file until the stars match as as best as possible so and I'm going to zoom in again 50% and I'm going to have a look in those corners and hold control while I use the mouse to make sure they match so good on that side not so great on this side The all important feature is the horse head itself, so you want to make sure that it's looking nice and sharp, which it is. It's not looking too bad, and that's not looking too bad at all. So, when you're happy that it's matching as best as possible, I'm going to zoom out. just press return and select and deselect so now you've got your HA image 
over the top matching up with your HA RGB image underneath. Now I'll show you the effect of what it has when it, you add a HA layer to your HA RGB image. So if we go, that's without, and that's with, without, with. So I'm just going to crop this image down a little bit so we don't see any of these nasty edges. And then we have our combined HA RGB image, our data all together. I'm just going to click merge down or flatten, flatten image now that I'm happy that they're all matching up together. And then I'm just going to process this as just quickly using the camera rule filter. So basic and you can really see the image coming to life now. thoughts I'm going to reduce that texture just a touch just do a bit of sharpening with a mask of about 45 and some noise reduction And some colour noise reduction at the same level. And just quickly, I'm going to do colour mixer. Add a bit of luminance in the red channel and the orange channel. Gonna boost the saturation just a touch and the hue I'm gonna change it just to be a little bit more red there we go and then one final run on deep sky colours, Hasta La Vista Green again, medium this time and there we go, there we have a HA and RGB image of the horse head uh, comprised of data from two different filters, the Altair Triband and the Sky Pro, uh, Skytech L Pro Max. So. I hope you find that video useful um, let me know how you get on with it or if there's anything I need to change or if you need any clarification but that is how to combine HA and RGB data in Photoshop as always thanks for watching um, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helps and I'll see you on the next video